Hi, what's up, y'all? It's Poppin' with Cracking. And today, Boss Reacts to this vid is titled How Facial Fat Influences Your Looks. What Makes a Face Attractive? We're getting a scientific video today, okay? Very interesting topic because I've heard people say that facial fat makes some people look young, which I don't know if I agree with. I, I feel like it's, it's a case by case basis. Sometimes a little additional fat in your face can make you look younger, but a lot of the time, Whenever you see people who are big and they lose weight, a lot of them look younger when they lose weight. So I, I, don't, I don't know, but, but let's hear what they have to say. Let's hear what the science says, let's watch. In this episode, we're gonna be taking a look at why facial fat and body no, fat he looks percentages as a whole make <laughs> such on the right too, a difference in facial shape, perceptions, and attractiveness. It's not a stretch to say that facial fat can completely change how a person looks. Firstly, what is Body fat, facial fat, body fat, any kind of fat. Well, the first thing we have to talk about, let's explain what facial fat actually is. Just like the fat found around your belly, adipose tissue gain is a natural process that results from an increase in energy intake. Body fat we want to focus on is subcutaneous fat because that is a type of fat that's found under the skin. It supplies not only to places fat. like the stomach, but the face holds subcutaneous fat as well. See, she Especially looks so much younger. Bugle or the cheek Look at that. She looks so much younger with the slimmer face. Continuous fat as well, especially around the bugle or the Same cheek region. When we eat less food and exercise more, we lose that extra adipose tissue. In the same way that losing belly fat causes the abdominal muscles yeah. to start to pop out and you get abs, the exact same thing applies to the face. The difference is, it's mostly the bones, like the jawline and the cheekbones, that we quickly see popping better, instead obviously. of, say, a muscle, like the rectus abdominis. The general idea of depth and 3D-ness is what makes an attractive face. The abs seem to have a lot more depth as you lose body fat, and so do the cheekbones, the mid-face region, the jawline. Even though we usually see photos from a 2D view, we can still pick up that depth perception. A face with more facial fat just lacks these contours in that 3D context. Mm. Coleman et al. discussed the importance of considering the 3D-ness of the mid-face region when assessing attractiveness. Even moderate amounts of fat gain can completely change your face shape and attractiveness. Taylor Lautner mm. loses a lot of the angularity around his mid-face to lower face. These are some of the more obvious effects of weight gain and overall goofier face with rounded cheeks and jaw you don't need me to tell you mm. that, most of you are probably already aware of how this works. The zygion is the widest part of your face, where your cheekbones are. When you gain body fat, you lose whatever the contours you had in this region that already existed. Usually, there will be a slight dip right above and below the cheekbones at the temporal region. Hey, look at the lean face will have more contours and be more shapelier and angular. This is most easily seen in the mandible as you lose weight, but the same concept can apply to all areas of the face. Since we tend to gain facial fat around the mid-face region and the jaw, extreme cases of fat gain can completely change your face shape, causing all sorts of facial contours and proportions that don't really look natural. Mm. Chris Pratt had an incredible weight loss journey and his facial attractiveness improved a lot as a result. We can see that his face just lacked the angularity and now it's a lot more striking. Like we mentioned earlier, there is the 3D aspect of the face that is also night and day in terms of differences. His buckle region was a lot more plump beforehand. The loss of facial fat helped accentuate the deep contours and valleys around his cheeks, the under eye region, the chin, and the glabella or the brow area. I mean, he was a the child. jaws also has a lot more depth and shadows to it. Chris's facial width to height ratio went down a considerable amount as his cheeks slimmed down. This can affect the perceptions of masculinity, creativity, aggressiveness, and a number of other factors like mm, dominance, but it's true. not that big of a difference in this case. His face just looks taller and less bloated, which is a benefit no matter right. how you look at it. Playing around in the lip you can sort of manipulate the weight and loss gain just by altering the facial width and facial contours, but it's not perfect and it's quite difficult to show this there in Photoshop. Soup, it's one of the still most masculine. Things. <laughs> More masculine how does right. gaining facial fat change facial proportions? A face from this study by Rule et al was altered to show a reduction in BMI. Personally, the edit doesn't seem to do a very good job of showing the weight difference, but one major proportion did change. The eye spacing changes a decent amount, in that the interpupillary distance, or the distance between the eyes, makes up more of the facial width after weight loss. 
In essence, losing facial fat makes the eyes appear wider set and larger. Derek from More Place More Dates also achieved a similar effect. His face seems slimmer, eyes larger, and even his jaw is proportionally wider. An overlooked aspect of facial attractiveness is retaining a wide jaw and compact mid-face appearance despite the actual face being slimmer. That comes down to a bone structure difference where most people can achieve a wide jaw and mid-face if they just gained a lot of fat. This guy is an even more exaggerated example of this. This is because when we gain fat around our cheeks, our bizygomatic width, or the width of our face, actually starts to increase. Your face gets bigger, physically bigger. This can sometimes work to your favor if you have really close set eyes that throw off the facial harmony. Losing weight may help offset that by making your eyes appear closer to the edge of the face. Thus, you get the appearance of having wider set eyes. Conversely, gaining weight may help offset overly wide set eyes because now your eyes look like they're more inwards towards the face. This guy made some drastic improvements in all parts of his face. His jaw got way more tapered and now has a discernible jaw frontal angle, whereas his jaw was round beforehand. His cheekbones now appear more high and pronounced. The excess adipose tissue around the cheeks make the under eye region look hollower and more set back than it actually is. But after weight loss, everything seems to even out more, while at the same time adding the element of depth. The buccal region and the infraorbital region, or simply put the mid-face, just appear way less pudgy or pinchable, which are real terms. Since fat really likes to go in these areas, they are also one of the last areas to lose fat. Will Smith's cheeks looked a lot more defined even after 20 pounds of fat loss. Similar to the guy before, Derek achieved a more tapered and defined jaw by getting below 10% body fat, his jaw went from a rounded shape to a harmonious angle of inclination, all from about 70 to 80 pounds of body fat loss. These types of transformation extremes are hard to come by as most people won't ever venture that low of body fat. But the last question is, how does gaining fat affect the side profile? Just like the front view, losing facial fat mm. can make a huge improvement to your side profile. In major transformations, a person could essentially find their jawline, as if they thought they didn't have a jawline and then they lose the fat and realize, oh, I have a really nice jawline, really nice bone structure. This guy goes from no discernible gonial angle or jaw angle to a clearly visible mandible, ramus, and jaw outline. Beyond that is some like mental or the cervical angle, which is the you angle that's neck the makes with the jaw, completely starts to change. This is actually quite an important feature when it comes to perceived attractiveness because it is strongly correlated with body fat levels and forward levels of facial growth. Research by Naini et al. shows strong correlation between this angle and the facial aesthetic or the attractiveness of a subject. An angle around 95 degrees is most pleasing, which basically produces a firm and tall look where you don't have any hanging skin or excess fat in the underjaw region. Liposuction or fat loss can lower this measurement by a good amount, even by up to 20 degrees, but an increase of this angle results in lowered perceived attractiveness. Usually hanging neck or skin and fat is associated with both aging and body fat gain, but it kind of makes sense. If you've ever heard of jowls, it's something you get as you get older, that raises this angle, which is why we perceive it with negative attractiveness traits. A study by Coleman et al. talks about the aging face, and we'll probably have to make a whole other video on that. The decreased jaw definition, facial jowls, and a turkey neck are all common signs of aging. The study even touches on the mental cervical angle worsening as the hyoid bone descends and the region below the jaw just seems to droop. The hyoid bone is basically where the neck ends and the, the head starts, it's this low hanging bone and if you have a low hyoid bone it pushes your under jaw region lower and you seem to have a turkey neck even if you don't have one and you're very lean. Since a defined jaw and firm neck are youthful features, fat gain can essentially make you look older even if the region below your jaw becomes too undefined. On top of all of this, a leaner face just looks more youthful in general. Being mm, at a I knew it, I knew it. People will be like, yeah, people who are chubby actually look younger. No, they don't. <laughs> Again, case by case basis, because I'm sure sometimes that's the case. But I feel like overall, in general, the people I've seen with my own eyeballs, when they've lost weight, they look younger. Like, Damn near everybody that I've seen, that I've witnessed lose weight. It's like, you clearly look younger when you lose weight. Percentage will optimize your hormonal profile and general health. The skin, hair, eyebrow density, and other indicators will improve in suit. 
The million dollar question then is how much weight do you actually need to lose to become that attractive base? It's, well, the answer isn't simple, obviously, but in a paper by Nicholas Rule and Daniel E, but there were some interesting person. nuances found with how weight affects facial attractiveness. The simplest thing to note was that the adiposity, or the body fat levels basically, is strongly correlated with facial attractiveness. Underweight and overweight faces were judged as less attractive than those with healthy BMI. The slightly discouraging takeaway from this study was that while people can notice even slight weight changes in your face, it takes a lot more weight gain to change your facial attractiveness. This does kind of make sense when you think about it. A facial fat may be one of the last places to go. <laughs> Thank you, Megan. This does advice, Facebook. make sense intuitively, as facial fat is one of the last regions to go, so you need to lose a lot of weight before it starts coming off your face. Most of your body fat is held below the shoulders, and you're going to have to basically reduce a significant amount of body fat to show off any facial gains in simple terms. Most models are at the low end of the normal BMI range, or even sometimes underweight, and this certainly brings out the bone structure for the runway look, but it's not always efficient in maximizing facial attractiveness. Mm, to appear lighter, a subject only had to lose about 1.3 BMI points, but to appear more facially attractive, it was about 2.5, so a much bigger change to actually for it to come off your face. But the paper did not extend outside of the scope of Northern America, so looking at this from a very Western-centric approach, and it is well researched that cultural influence can affect the weight to facial attractiveness relationship. For instance, in some cultures, being rounder and puffier is actually desired, like in, uh, I think it was Mauritania? Lay et al. found that fat mass really only seems Force to affect younger, facial masculinity okay. in underweight men. Basically, facial fat can add some masculinity if a man looks overly gaunt or emaciated. We do seem to prefer defined masculine faces in the West. An overly gaunt face can signal illness, lack of food, fragility. See, yeah, that's definitely a thing. It's like when you, of course, you losing weight from when you overweight, you're going to look better and leaner. But as you start losing more and more weight, then, yeah, you start to look sick and you look crazy. That's why in the initial clip that showed uh, the Joker man, I keep forgetting his, his name. Um, that's why he looks so bad in the left uh, picture because <laughs> he got real skinny for that role. And it's like, all right, now you're looking sick and old and crazy. All of which aren't yeah, exactly there, attractive and desirable line. traits for a man. Sometimes losing weight is not the best way to improve your looks. Being at a normal weight is almost always going to be more attractive than either end of the extreme. Yeah. While losing some extra weight within that normal range may add that boost in attractiveness, there are trade-offs to consider. A person should really consider their mental state and reasons for losing weight. It's well researched that improving one's attractiveness is a much larger motivator when it comes to weight loss than for actual health improvements. That is true. There is nothing wrong with that really, but if you are tunneled in on the attractiveness part, you can compromise on your mental and physical health. Especially a good example of this is taking steroids to get leaner. You're sacrificing health for attractiveness and they're not exactly correlated in this modern context. This model may look good in both photos, but she has noted her struggles with her body image and weight no, journey. I love she look crazy. And her face is arguably more attractive in the left photo as it is slimmer, more feminized, and more angular. I will say her face looks slightly more attractive, but she's a really pretty girl. Um, so I, I feel like either looks fine, but once you start to go below the neck, it's like, nah. <laughs> she look crazy. And I'm not going to say this one necessarily looks better either. I don't think that... <laughs> Whatever. Uh -huh. However, the difference is not make or break and certainly not worth developing an eating disorder over. This is an issue within the modeling industry where models and even ourselves as normal people have been conditioned to associate these extremes with beauty. While, yes, being lean maximizes facial attractiveness, research would not seem to support the extremes of Western modeling standards. That in itself is a beauty standard that's in an isolated bubble. Mm -hmm. Lastly, weight loss will not look the same for everyone. Yes. The underlying bone structure will determine how contoured and angular your what face looks at the end and every step of that way in between. Some faces look a lot leaner than others despite being higher body fat. Losing body fat is probably one of the most worthwhile ways to improve your looks, especially for those that are overweight. The 9-12% range for men and 17-20% to for women generally maximizes facial attractiveness. While a bit above that will also do a comparable job, getting above 16 to 17% or so for men and 25% for women 
may start to detract from facial attractiveness, but again, everyone is different and they do store body fat differently. There are other channels that can give you a better detailed rundown of how best to go about losing body fat. Very interesting video, but ultimately do what you want. Nobody cares. If you wanna be fat, be fat. If you wanna lose weight, lose weight. It's your life, okay? Uh, but I feel like a lot of people definitely look better when they lose a bit of weight, when they go from being overweight to getting a bit leaner. But yeah, once it starts to tip into the underweight category and you start to look too skinny, then yeah, you might start to look a little crazy. So you gotta find that right balance. I feel like for most people to find you attractive. Uh, but yeah, interesting. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Let me know what other videos you're gonna watch and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.